Welcome to Advocate Today, I'm Aaron Dean. Nebraska's governor has signed a bill that bans most abortions after 12 weeks and bans gender-affirming care for people under 19 years old. The debate around the bill led to protests at the state's capital. Six people were arrested, some accused of throwing objects onto the chamber floor, yelling during the debate, and refusing to leave. The bill makes exceptions for abortions in the case of sexual assault, incest, and medical emergencies. And the bill only allows procedures for transitioning after a waiting period, therapeutic hours, to determine if a person's gender, gender dysmorphia is long-lasting and and intense. The ACLU of Nebraska says that the consequences of the law will be devastating. A federal judge in Mississippi has denied a transgender girl from attending her high school graduation because she wanted to wear a dress. Now the teen and her mother are speaking out. Because when we signed it, we were under the impression that I would have the girls dress code. Right, because she identifies as female, so we went by the female's dress code. We felt like we were, you know, abiding by the dress code. The student who goes by the initials LB has been openly transgender since she began attending Harrison Central High School. The school district says that it goes by the birth certificates to record whether students are male or female. And Illinois could soon allow all gender multi-occupancy restrooms. Right now, they're prohibited under state law, but a bill the state Senate passed on Thursday would change that. It modifies similar legislation the House approved in March by prohibiting urinals and requiring floor-to-ceiling dividers. Any multiple occupancy restroom may be identified as and or converted into an all-gender restroom. A facility may choose to construct all gender multiple occupancy restrooms. The bill sets out the requirements for these restrooms, which include inclusive signage, floor to ceiling stall dividers with locking mechanisms, trash receptacles in each stall, a menstruation supply, uh, supplies vending machine, a baby changing station, and ADA compliance. While HB 1286 allows implementation of an all-gender multiple occupancy restroom, it does not mandate that facilities convert or construct such restrooms. Again, domestic violence um, organizations like ICASA, um, the Illinois Coalition Against Domestic Violence case are in support of this bill. And again, not a mandate, it is permissive. In Illinois, single occupancy restrooms are automatically open to people of any gender. More than 130 anti-LGBTQ plus laws have been passed in the U.S. this year, and there's a group in Alabama hoping to challenge and stop those laws. Central Alabama Pride organized the Drag Me to the Capitol event to demand equal rights for all of those who are in the state. I spoke with their vice president, Gina Malisham, about their mission. And there are many bills out there that are attacking LGBTQ rights. Um, you know, with you being there in the midst of it all, can you kind of talk about what impact it's, it's having on the community there? What are people saying? How are they feeling? Um, you know, I feel like a lot of this has backfired on the Republicans that would step into a space that attacks the protections of LGBTQ people in, in such a serious way. Um, not only do we not have the time to waste, um, you know, and, and the resources, but there are a lot of folks who learn from our rally that we've had this week, as well as the committee meeting that happened on yesterday, the 17th of May, that there's a lot of support in the state for them. It can be really easy to feel like, particularly if you're siloed into a rural community um, where you don't see support every day, that you're here alone and that you're going through this alone. But I think if there's one thing we've shown our legislators and the residents of this great state is that you're not alone. The queer community is robust and we're here to take care of each other. And then as you look at each one of the respective bills, there have been small things we've learned as we have been forced to re-examine what our legislator thinks should be the rights of a parent over a child um, who doesn't identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. They're also forced now to realize that if we give power to parents, that means we're also giving power to trans parents. Um, and so they're forced to you know, reevaluate that. 
And the same goes for the other bills that have moved forward that we have had to actually argue in committee. Um, that being the anti-trans um, sporting law um, that would prevent collegiate athletes from being able to compete with um, with the, the, the exact same gender um, that they identify with rather than the one that they were assigned at birth. Um, and although it's passed through both houses of our legislature, it still hasn't been signed by our governor. And so we have to assume that must be because of the heavy push of support for the LGBTQ community that's come from the NCAA athletes um, who would be affected by this bill. And the same goes for HB 405, which would be our LGBTQ Erasure Act. It came up for committee on yesterday and we had people from across the state being given the opportunity to speak on it as it was heard. And folks learned a lot just within those four testimonies about the effects of LGBTQ erasure, particularly trans erasure, um, from the perspective of public health in our health department to all different government offices. Um, we cannot undo what protections have been done um, if we do um, things are going to go crazy. And I think they're starting to realize that. Someone is going to be watching this and they're going to say, you know what? I have a friend who is a part of this community who is feeling you know, hurt by what's happening in their government. What do you say with your position with the Central Alabama Pride Action? What do you say to um, the family members or the allies of people who are being impacted by these things? I tell you, it's the same message that we've been sharing um, for 45 years. Central Alabama Pride, and that is that you have support. If you're not sure how to be there for someone, um, how to serve as a true ally or co or, or co-conspirator, um, if you feel maybe like you're wavering in your ability to speak up for somebody, we're here with those tools available for folks. Um, and so it's not just Central Alabama Pride. We celebrate a lot of support here in Alabama from organizations like the Magic City Acceptance Project, um, they're willing to step into your place of work, your church, your school, wherever invited um, to share information with folks about how you can be more affirming. And so while those organizations thrive on invitation, we're also willing to, when necessary, as we have this week, step into the public and share that information with people, what it takes to be a real ally and what it means to really step up for folks because that support is so important, particularly to young people. Um, and so definitely that would be our message is that even as an ally, you're not out here alone, there's support for you. And with the work that you all are doing and that you're actively doing, you know, do you, um, are you hopeful? when it comes to the work that you're doing, do you feel like you're making an impact? Do you think these people are listening to the things that you all are saying? We are hopeful. We realize that um, we've come a very, very long way. I mean, we're here in the birthplace of the modern day civil rights movement. Um, Birmingham, Alabama has such a storied past and we celebrate that alongside the other minority communities here, um, our ability to make change and make impact. But because we're so close to these roots um, and because it runs so deeply through our ancestry, we also realize that what doesn't appear to be a win isn't necessarily a law. The Advocate Channel, Equal Pride, and Out Magazine are joining with iHeartMedia and Procter & Gamble as the streaming partner and a media sponsor for Can't Cancel Pride. It's one of the biggest Pride celebrations online, and the celebration kicked off at New York's Club Nebula for the Out.com digital cover release party and the announcement of the full lineup of performers. The Advocate Channel's Stephen Walker caught up with the headliner Big Frida on the red carpet to talk about the significance of Can't Cancel Pride. Okay, and for a little white boy from London, could you explain bounce music? I was reading up today. Bounce music is a, um, a New Orleans-based mu music. It is a subgenre of hip hop. It's up tempo, heavy bass, call and respond, and has lots to do with shaking of the ass. Oh, <laughs> it sounds like my kind of thing. Very, yes. very exciting. Who else are you excited to see at Can't Cancel Pride this year? Um, me and Sierra is performing together. I'm excited to see Kesha, Billy Porter, Adam Lambert. You know, everybody, Haley, everybody that's on the bill. I mean, Can't Cancel Pride was conceived during, you know, COVID, but it's living on and doing such a good job. It's raising huge amounts of money. Yes. Why do you think it's so important for 
to keep going. Keep it's, impor going. it's important for us to keep on pushing pride and us to be celebrated and for the LGBTQ community to have people that speak for them and are allies for the community. And Can Council Pride is a great event that's letting them know you can't cancel us no kind of way, ifs, ands, or buts about it, honey. This year, JoJo Siwa is your Can't Cancel Pride host. Performers will include Adam Lambert and, like you saw, Big Frida, Brandi Carlisle, Sierra, Billy Porter, Kesha, and so many more. During this event, Brandi Carlisle will also receive the Elton John Impact Award. Can't Cancel Pride has raised over $11 million in donations for LGBTQ plus groups since 2020. The Can't Cancel Pride event will stream live on the Advocate Channel June 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And thanks for joining me on This Advocate Today. Visit us wherever you stream or online at theadvocatechannel.com. I'm Aaron Dean, and we will see you next time.